All right, welcome back, everybody. It's Fiera Luna here again. Uh, today, we're actually going to make something. Uh, it's very exciting, and I'm going to show you a brand new technique that you can learn. Um, so what we're going to make today is called a granny square. It is one of the most basic things that you will learn in crochet. Uh, you use these primarily for making blankets, um, although some people will stitch them together and make clothing out of them, like sweaters and vests and stuff like that. Um, as they were especially popular to do that with in the 1970s. Um, heck, you can even see pictures of some of the Beatles wearing stuff like that. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to show you how to make them, and I'm also going to show you how to do something called the magic ring. It's okay if you can't make a magic ring. Instead, what you would do, um, I will show you how to do both ways of making the center of a square. So I will show you the easiest way first. Although I, I personally prefer the magic ring, I understand it can be a little tricky if you're brand new. The easiest thing to do is to make your slip knot. Just like that. Pop your hook in. I'm using a 5.0 hook and worsted weight yarn. Uh, if you want, you can use practically anything for this. It'll just make your square a different size than mine. That's all. Um, the easiest way to do this, or the way that most people will start off, is to make a chain of two. Maybe three, but usually two. Um, they'll insert their hook into the very first chain. They'll yarn over. Make themselves a little slip stitch to join them together. And then you fuss with this to find sort of the inside of this somewheres. right there. <laughs> you can feel it. And then you work inside of that. Or you can make a chain of three or four and have a circle that way. Um, let me make a bigger chain just to make a bigger circle. Four. And then we'll slip stitch in there. And then you find the center of your circle, which can be a little tricky, but it's right there. And then what you'll do is you'll work inside the center of this and you'll work over the tail. So we're going to need our double crochets for this. Um, you'll start by chaining two. This does not count as a stitch. Um, then you yarn over one, you stick it through the little hole in the middle, pull up, and then you work like this. And then you do another one. And you do one more. And that's the first tiny little bit of a granny square done. Now what you want to do is chain two. We're not going to turn this work around. You're going to chain two. And that's going to help you get a corner because these are squares we're making. So you make your, you yarn over for your double crochet, you stick your hook inside that little hole in the middle, bring up your loop, and then you make yourself a double crochet. Uh, if your stitch tension is a little different than mine, you might be able to get away with stitch, uh, with only one, uh, or you might need to use three to make your way around the corner. It depends on how your stitch tension is. And then you make three double crochets here. just like this. And then you chain two. Two. Then you go back into that little hole. And you keep going with your double crochets. Whoop. All right. Now, what I've been doing is laying the tail across and working it, working over it. So I've sort of set it back there and it's underneath of all these stitches. So I can give it a little tug to tighten things up when we're done here. Um, and then what we'll do is chain two to make the corner turn. We'll tuck the tail out of the way because we're not going to keep working over it because we're going to need it. We'll make our double crochet 
Another one. You may need to give your uh, work a little bit of a tug just to get the space that you need. We keep going. And another one just like that. Now, when you come to the end of your work, um, what you're going to want to do is just make one single chain stitch. And to join, you'll find that first treble crochet. Now remember, or first double crochet. Now remember that I taught you when we were learning how to make our stitches. Oops, bumped my light just a little bit, but we're okay. Remember when I taught you how to make uh, your stitches, that your first stitch you can find either by counting the posts, which are these, one, two, three, or you can find it by counting at the top, which is here, one, two, three. This stuff is all a turning chain. So you're going to slot your hook in here under that first stitch, and then you're going to pull a chain like this. That way, you have two chain stitches technically, but everything's all connected. Now, I'm going to undo this because uh, this works up exactly the same after this. I just prefer a magic ring, so I'm going to show you how to make one. And we're going to undo this real quick. A magic ring takes a tiny little bit more yarn, but I find it, it, it tightens up better in the middle. I find it looks a lot cleaner. I also use it quite frequently because I make uh, stuffed animals and other little things that require um, that require that hole to in them to be a lot smaller than just a couple of stitches will normally provide like that. So the way that you make a magic ring is a little bit different than usual. You wrap it, you wrap the yarn around your finger like you're going to start working with it, but instead of coming up over like you're going to like working with it normally. You go like this. You come up over the front of your hand and then around this finger. Uh, so you can go around just once. I find it gives a stronger hold if I go around twice. Um, you go around twice, leave it a little tiny bit loose so that you can get your hook in under there. Because what you're going to do is put your hook in underneath. You're going to take this yarn that's back here you're going to bring this through underneath those two little bits of yarn, pull it up just as if you're pulling up a loop. Let me untangle that just a little bit. And then you're going to take it again, yarn over, pull it through to make a chain stitch, and now you've locked it in place. Um, so I know that what I need is 12 single crochets in here, uh, or alternatively, you can just work your uh, first little bit of your granny square just as you were working it in the other ring. Uh, it's a little bit different to tension because uh, for me anyway because I'm using this finger when I wouldn't normally but you work it exactly the same way so you just kind of do your double crochets in underneath of both loops of the ring This is a little tricky, but I promise the results are worth it. So you saw how we had quite a big hole for the other square. This way, we're going to get a very small hole. Oops, my tension got away from me there a little bit. You chain your two, just the same as you would. And then you keep it up with the double crochets. Careful, careful. Oh. And then you carry on like this. Now, the thing is that this magic ring is going to want to try to pull it away from you. And the more you pull that yarn along, the shorter that this tail is going to get. And you're going to need that tail for later, so don't let it get away from you. Don't let it get sucked up into your work. Um, what I'm doing which is a little bit difficult to see because of the way I'm working is I'm holding it in between my two knuckle, two first knuckles on these fingers to help keep it from getting away from me. Um, that gets harder to do the further around the circle you are and the more stitches you're trying to put in. Um, if you're making a very big circle or starting a very big project, uh, I suggest using two fingers and wrapping around both of them to get your magic ring. Um, some people will start that way naturally 
and that's okay too. So we're going to keep going. Oh, oh, my yarn's starting to get just a little bit tangled. That's something to look out for when you're working is make sure your yarn doesn't get too tangled up around itself. Sometimes it will. Um, that's normal for it. There we go. One, two, three. Three little sets. And then we're going to do one, two. Oof. And then... One double crochet, two double crochet, come on. It's a little fussy in this position. And a third double crochet. All right. And then we want to do one chain. We're not going to hook these back together just yet because what we want to do is pull on this magic ring a little. And if my camera would kindly cooperate with me, thank you. Thank you, camera. That's very nice of you to cooperate just a little bit. Um, I'm going to pull this chain stitch out just a little bit. I wouldn't normally need to do this, but I want to show you guys what I'm doing. Um, so. You want to find your back thread and your front thread. These are going to be a little bit tricky to spot. Um, but your back thread is going to be the one that the front thread rather is going to be the one that you can see sort of in the front over here. And the back thread is back and behind. So you want to tug on the back thread first to tighten up that front one. Tighten it right up. And then you tug on the tail to tighten the rest. And you can see that this loop, this loop down here is getting tightened right in. You tighten that up nicely. And when you get to that point, you'll see there's practically no hole at all. Like I can't even stick my hook in there. Well, maybe I could, but I'm not going to because it'll get stuck. So there's practically no hole at all. And I find it makes a much cleaner look personally. There we go, we're back to that first chain. And we'll do the same thing we did the first time we went through this. We'll insert our hook into this opening stitch here. And we'll make that last chain. And that should keep everything even. Now, the next part of Granny Square is real easy. All you do is chain two, just like you did the first time. Uh, and you are going to actually work into this little spot. Um, you're going to work your double crochets in there. Now this can make a blanket look a little bit uneven sometimes and that's okay. Uh, some people will start off with, uh, with three stitches here instead uh, and count that as a stitch and then do two doubles and then carry on as normal. I just personally prefer to do it this way. So instead of turning a corner, we're only going to chain one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to work into this next corner. So you're going to take and yarn over as normal. You're going to find a spot in this corner, somewhere comfy. You're going to get in under the corner, not inside the yarn or anything. So you sort of pull open this little hole here. And you just stick your hook. Oh, wrong thing. You just stick your hook right in there. So just like that. And then you yarn over for a double crochet and you can see it's gone sort of around that little hook there and you pull and you do your double crochet. We're going to do two more of those just like that. And one more. So you've got something like this. And then to make your next corner, you're going to chain two. And then you're going to go back into this big old hole. Right back into it. And you're going to do the same thing you did last time, where you make your double crochet in that hole.
And that is the first corner of this square. So you can see it's kind of sharpened off. And then you're going to chain one. And then you're going to find your next big old hole. And you're going to work your double crochets the same way you did last time. Right around. And then you work your two. And you can see that this is starting to curl up a little bit. Um, yours shouldn't do that. Mine's doing that because my stitch tension is super duper tight. Um, you can fix stuff curling up like that by something called blocking, which is where you put whatever you're working on once it's done uh, onto a board or a wall or something and you pin it in place uh, in the shape that you want it. With wool, you spray it down with water and when it dries, it'll have the shape that you want. With acrylic, it's a little harder, uh, but you can get it just by sort of making it pull itself into position. Um, now you chain two. And then you find that little hole just like you did. And you work your double crochets. And that is your second corner. You're going to sense a pattern here real quick, I'm sure. Um, and then you're going to single crochet. You're going to find your next little hole. And you're going to work your doubles. Three double crochets in there. And you carry on like that. And then you do two. One, two. Two chains. And then you find your hole once more again. Get in there. And it's two double crochets, just like that. Three double crochets. <laughs> oh. My iron's decided to tangle itself up just a little bit. Don't worry about that. It happens. Uh, and then you chain one one more time. And you work your double crochets in here. Doo, doo, doo. All right. Now, we're back to the beginning of the round. Um, and we are working technically in the round, despite the fact that this is a square. <laughs> uh, you chain one. You find the first stitch of your previous round. You get your hook in there, and you pull through. Okay, and we're going to do one more round, uh, because there's a thing that I have to show you about granny squares. I know you've already sensed a pattern, but I want to make sure that you've got it. So you do your doubles, your or rather your two chain to get the height that you need, and then your three double crochets, just like this. Now we're not at a corner yet, so what you do is you chain one, you find the space that you made on that previous round, um, that chain one space, you yarn over, and you make your three double crochets in that chain one space. And you keep right on going, and then you chain one like that. Now we are at a corner, so we're going to make double crochets in the side here, in our little corner spot, we're going to chain two, one, two, we're going to go back into that corner spot and do some double crochets, and then we're not at a corner. So we're going to chain one, make my yarn untangle itself just a little tiny bit. Oh, oh dear. One moment. This yarn has got quite a bit of a tangle into it. Don't you worry though, I'm a master at getting these untangled out. There we go. Now I'm back. Chain our one, do up the doubles in that chain one space from before. And, oh, camera, please cooperate. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, I hope it cooperates. It cooperates! Yay! We chain one, and we are at a corner, so we're going to work into that corner space. Just like this. You make your double crochets. Da, da, da. And then you chain two, one, two, to make the corner turn. You got to make sure that is a little bit longer than your chain one spaces, because otherwise you won't be able to get all the way around the corner neatly. Um, some patterns may call for different numbers of chains or different numbers of um, double crochets, but that's because they're trying to make a little bit of a different shape. You can make this into a triangle too, just fine by making three of these and chaining three uh, to get around the corners. So you can make sort of a bunting looking thing, uh, which is what those little triangle banner guys are. There we go. Double crochet just like this. We are at a corner now, so we chain one and then we do our double crochets in that big corner space. And then one, two, and then in we go. Now, the thing about granny squares is that they're squares. Um, the nice thing about that is that if you have, if you want to make a blanket and you want to make something out of, say, a video game or something like that, anything that uses pixels or squares or anything, uh, pearly bead patterns, for instance, um, what you want to do is find one of those, figure out what size square you want to use for them, and then you can just make that out of granny squares. Uh, I've made blankets that way uh, for Pokemon sprites. Uh, my favorite one is a Gengar blanket I made. Uh, but you can do it with anything. There's also another way to do that called corner to corner, which I'll teach you in another video. Um, and the way that corner to corner work is it also makes squares. So you can use that to um, replicate pixels from video games. If you're very fancy, you can make very fancy things. Um, there we go. All right, now we're back to the start. So we chain one and we find the first of these, which is this one here. Pop it in and pull up. Now, this is what a granny square will start to look like as you're working with it. You can see the holes um, from that you know from sort of traditional crocheted blankets. Now you could stop right there and carry on sewing, uh, sewing these squares together. Um, or you can keep going. You can make an entire blanket just going around like this. It'll come out square, but you can do the whole thing just this way. Um, all you have to remember is that if you're not at a corner, you chain one. If you are at a corner and trying to turn your, turn your way around, you chain two. Um, like I said, you can chain three if you want to make it a little bit more pronounced. I find that with the way my tension is, it makes it a little bit kind of wrinkly. Um, and for your last corner, make sure that you uh, make sure that you chain one less than whatever you're chaining to make your turns and just hook that last stitch in there. Now, granny squares can join up in a few ways. You can stop here and leave a tail on it. Uh, and just stitch them together that way. Uh, if you want, and you're working like this, you stop on the first square, and then you make a second square, and what you'll do when you get to the other end of the second square is you'll put your two squares together. You'll line them up. I'm going to line this one up to itself, sort of. You'll line them up to each other. You'll find where they are, where their stitches are. That's the outside corner, so I want this second stitch here. It's a little tricky to see, but I want that second stitch there. And what you'll do is you'll just slip stitch along, pushing through both stitches. And 
that single chain space, you'll just go into and come around. And then you'll find your first stitch of the next set. And what this will do eventually is join these things together. Uh, when you're doing this with granny squares, you want to make sure that um, you want to make sure that right sides are facing together. Um, you can do it the other way. It just depends on what you want your end result to look like. And then you'd keep going along like that. And eventually what you'd have is a joined granny square. It will give you a little bit of a border between them. You can also, um, if you've got all your granny squares done, oops, if you've got all your granny squares done, what you do is um, with a different color yarn or the same color, depending on how you're working, um, you would start from one of your squares and you would um, crochet around it in that different color and use that to join them all together, just like I slip stitched, uh, but with a single crochet instead. Uh, those are the ways that you can join granny squares. I'll do uh, another video uh, because I'll teach you how to make a sort of basic blanket that I've always uh, had on my in my back pocket. <laughs> So I'll show you how to join granny squares in that video for it. Uh, for now, that is how you make a granny square. It is a very simple design. Whether you're using the magic ring or uh, whether you're using the um, just a few chain stitches stuck together to make a circle, doesn't matter. Uh, the end result is going to look just the same, uh, except for the magic ring will have a smaller hole. Make sure you get some practice in. And I will see you again next time.